Hey there, Sharon Horn Elstrom here. How to supersize your business in the long run. Over the in the long run is an idiom from the early 1600s, and it of course means over a long period of time. They think it came presumably from runners when they ran, they would continue to run until they reached the end of his course, is is in the definition. Also, economic economist 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 John Maynard Keyes used it in a very um, famous quip and he said about economic planning in the long run we're all dead and that's been repeated a lot over history um, short-term and long-term thinking short-term thinking didn't come into play until actually the 1800s so a couple hundred years later we've been thinking about the long run uh, and we thought more long term as humans, it seems, even though we had shorter lifespans in the 1600s than we did in the 1800s, maybe with the industrial age and everything. So I want to look up strategies and talk a little bit today about how do we make sure that our business has longevity? How do we grow and supersize our business, but also make sure that it's going to stick around for the long run? And it's interesting. I found uh, eight strategies for business longevity from a woman I went to high school with. She's been a management consultant in the Twin Cities area, which is in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul area of Minnesota for decades now, since we've both been out of school for decades. And I thought it was just funny that I had found an article and the article was written by her. So what are these eight strategies for business longevity? Number one, we need to have an ongoing plan with a realistic vision. Number two, so we have to do planning, right? We want to have a long range plan. We have to see ourselves existing in the long run. Number two, we have to establish a realistic vision for the future. We have to have a vision for the future and it has to be founded a little bit on reality with a little bit of fantasy built in and long range visioning. Number three, we need to have a disciplined approach to leadership and executive skills and development. Our organizations are driven by the team that we put in place to grow and supersize our business. We need to have an approach to training and coaching and personal development and business development and skills development for that leadership team. Number four, we want to implement sound financial management and fiscal responsibility. Now you'd think this would go without saying, but how many organizations have we seen grow and implode because they didn't have good financial uh, and fiscal management response, um, practices and procedures in place? Number five, we want to adapt to a changing world and changing circumstances. And I honestly believe that to supersize and grow our businesses, this is probably number one. Our ability to adapt and change to, to the world and the environment around us is, to me, probably the most important skill that will determine whether you're here for the long run or not. Number six, we need to build substance into our enterprise. There are a lot of organizations and a lot of businesses that grow and explode and, and make a ton of money super fast but then fizzle out and die because they're they're built on smoke and mirrors. They're built on marketing and fluff. They're built on empty promises with no substance behind them. So make sure that there is substance, that you deliver on your promises, that you do what you say you're going to do, that you are real and true and committed to producing the changes in the world that you say you want to produce over the long run. And if you've got substance and there's there's something behind it, you know, it's the, uh, this reminds me of the shallow person that's just so good looking, the Greek god or the Greek goddess looking human that you want to have a relationship with and then you get to know them and you start dating and you realize that they're just a shell. They're this beautiful shell, but there's no depth or no substance to them. It's all surface. The same can happen in our businesses. If we are trying to grow our business on smoke and mirrors and not on real value added to the world and to the people that we serve, we're not going to have the substance to to maintain it over the long term. Number seven, we want to try to control growth. Now, sometimes that gets away from us, but to the best of our ability, we want to control and manage the growth so that over the long term, our business lasts. And then eight, we want to maintain motivation. And I say maintain momentum. We want to make progress and continue to maintain that progress and motivation toward building that long-term organization, the legacy we want to leave. So those were Jill's tips. I love them all. I agree with them all 100%. But I thought we'd do something fun today since it is Halloween and we should be getting on our spooky masks and getting ready for some fun. And I looked up the top 10 Halloween idioms today just for the fun of it. And I wanted to share those quickly to close out today. Number one, skeleton in the closet. 
Number two, Ghost Town. Number three, Scaredy Cat. Number four, Scared Stiff. Number five, Wouldn't Say Boo to a Goose. I gotta admit, this is probably the only one I am not really familiar with. It means to be really, really shy. So shy you wouldn't even say boo to a goose. Maybe because I'm not shy, that one never came up in my life. Uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous, Night Owl, Dig Your Own Grave, Graveyard Shift, and Over My Dead Body. I will admit I have used all of these except wouldn't say boo to a goose. Curious? Share in the comments below your favorite longevity strategy for your business or your favorite Halloween idiom today. Go out make it an awesome spooky Halloween. Have a uh, terrific night. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. Where does it mean? Where does it come from? How might you use it in your life? We're going to be switching off of the time-related idioms. And I think we're going to go money-related idioms for the month of November. Because November is about no-nonsense. And sometimes we need a more no-nonsense approach to our money. At least some of us do. All right. Have a great day. Any questions, ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow. Bye. Have a boo fantastic time.